talk about F around and find out. Well, another CGC lawsuit came out over the weekend. This is separate from the one from last week. Now, uh, just so everyone's clear on this, about a month ago, 99 Newsstand got the ball rolling a little over a month ago now about the original reholder scandal where people were taking lower grade books, swapping them into higher grade slabs, sending it in the CGC for a reholder, and rinse and repeat over and over and over and over again. This lawsuit against Zanello and Riva is that original scam. So this is them going after the people from the original scam that kind of started all this nonsense. The lawsuit from a couple of days ago, completely separate, that was a husband and wife employee thieving books internally at CGC and printing off fake labels and the whole nine yards. I know a lot of people want to try to connect those two together. In all honesty, I don't see it. The timelines don't match up. But let's dig in on this because it gives us uh, some more insight into the whole reholder scandal. So if you were curious of the people involved, a lot of people have been asking that question. And I have confirmed with some other people in the know these are the names that were circulating around back channels. Uh, that is Zanello and Riva. And then down here, we see their various, you could pause this or whatever, uh, if you've bought any books recently. And this is a um, civil trademark case brought in New York because that's where they reside. And you might ask why it's a trademark case, and it's because of the damages done to CGC's name because of the reholdering process or the, the, the scan that they were performing essentially defrauded CGC's name is the way that I basically understand it. A lot of people have been asking about, will there be criminal charges brought forth? Some lawyers have commented on this in the comments on multiple videos. Uh, I have seen some other stuff circulating around this as well. It seems to be that criminal charges probably won't come just based on the fact that no prosecutor will probably look at this and be like, eh, so you're fine legal system at work. So they're going after them. Uh, it looks like the best way that they can. So once again, here are some various eBay accounts that they sold under. So if any of these ring a bell, maybe go back through your purchase history. And then, you know, once again, Paul Lesko giving us the breakdown all this on all this. I'll link to the full thread in the comments or the um, description of the video down below. Uh, you can see we're going back to that Hulk or uh, Hulk 340, ASM 252, kind of rehashing the details of this. Now, here's where we start getting into some juicy bits. They submitted 2,000 plus comic books to CGC under their account. And the interesting thing here is, is that they were using a dealer account for comic book station slash comic book underground, which I believe is a shop. And these people were submitting under that to get a discounted price. They wanted cheaper pricing on their scams, but 2000 plus submissions and then approximately 369 for reholdering this approximately 369 for reholdering is where that list came from. Remember the list of comic books that was floating around out there? Did a video on it, a bunch of people have. The reholder ones are the ones that they are focusing on. And, and people are going to already know, because I've already seen comments on other videos, well, what about the other 2,000? The difference here is, and this is where, honestly, where the flaw is in CGC's system, the other 2,000 were submitted for standard grading. So those were reviewed by the grader, went through the normal authentication process, the whole nine yards. So those went through all the proper checks and balances that they were supposed to. The 369 went through on the reholder program and that in lies where the breakdown was because clearly the reholder program had some, let's just say flaws in the design that allowed this stuff to happen. So that is why the focus is on the 370 books or 369 books because those were specifically set in for reholdering. And that is where the flaw in the system is. The other 1,700 books 
probably are legitimately okay because they have been verified by the CGC process. CGC also mentions, I think it was like $4 million worth of books. Uh, that's what they were documented as and that the actual price of the books could be even higher. Then they go in and talking about, hey, how did we discover this? Oh, we discovered it because it was posted on social media. They don't name a new by name, but they say a prominent Instagram account uh, basically brought this to our attention. And then they kind of run through uh, exactly what went down here. Obtain the CGC graded books, open the sealed holder, swap the CGC comic out for a lower value copy, submit that lower value for CGC reholdering, and then reselling it to unsuspecting consumers. Uh, let's backtrack a little bit on this. Open the sealed holder. Uh, Asterix, have a holder that you can't reopen and not tell. Submitted the lower value copy to CGC for reholdering. Asterix, make your reholdering program better. Maybe someone should, I don't know, glance at the stuff to make sure it's the same book. Sheesh. Because, listen, this is CGC going on the offensive on the people that did this. That's all well and good. But this does not absolve you, CGC, of the fact that you let this happen for as long as it did. If it wasn't for 99 Newsstands posting, this would still be going on. This would still be happening. Because your internal controls are not as good as random people on the internet. The CGC forums are better in internal controls than you have. Now, to be fair, we don't know the things that they do catch. Maybe they catch stuff all the time. We're never going to hear about it. So that is a possibility. Maybe they're shutting stuff down left, right, and center, uh, and they're catching scams all the time, and it just never gets – they're never going to tell you that because they don't want that getting out there. But maybe that's the case. I doubt it, but it could be. You never know. Crazier things have happened. Uh, I was scrolling through here. Uh, once again, some more examples of different books. Uh, here's where we kind of crack the case. December 16th from an Instagram post about a potential scam that's involving the Mark Jewelers. Uh, it was bought for 15700 but originally been sold for 2000 That's a nice little profit there. Here's an entertaining one. Zanello and Riva, once the news got out, basically got scared attempted to recover three books that defendants had recently submitted to CGC for reholdering. For example, the three books had been incorrectly shipped and the submission was a huge mistake. And this is kind of stressing them out. Definitely needed to get them back from CGC. The calls are recorded. I don't know if we'd ever be able to hear those or not. I guess if they were submitted to evidence, I don't know how that works. I went to a jury trial. I guess that information would be out there. Uh, I bet you those calls are absolutely hilarious. So essentially the gig was up and they went into panic mode like you do. Uh, this should be, and once again, the reason why CGC is going on the offensive on this is to scare anyone from doing this in the future. Hey, you want to scam us? Cool. You might make us look bad. You might make some money for a while, but eventually you're going to get got. And when you do, we're coming at you. Now it's going to be civil. So it'll be financially based. Once again, I don't, I would be surprised just based off what I've seen. Once again, not a lawyer. I do watch a bunch of Law and Order. That criminal charges here will probably not be coming just based off our legal system being meh. Goes on to state how they are reviewing hundreds of comic books that went through the dependent submissions. That's essentially the list that people are sending back or sending stuff back in for review. Uh, and then here's another good one. Multiple inquiries from individual comic book collectors and consignment business who believe were duped. There is, I don't remember where it is. They talk about Comic Link. Uh, we'll probably get to it. Oh, yeah. A large, well-respected comic book auction firm called Comic Link was in possession of a number of potentially swapped CGC books, which, because Comic Link thought they were graded, advanced them tens of thousands of dollars. Which, this is common. Au large auction houses like this will essentially... I don't want to say pre-buy the book, but basically front the money or a, a percentage of what they think the items will sell for. And then obviously, you know, they'll take their cut back and pay the rest out to the consigner once it sells. 
And it looks like in this case, Comic Links got tens of thousands of dollars sitting in their hands for fraudulent books. Now, the interesting thing there is I wonder how CGC would handle that. Would Comic Link be able to submit those books through the list program and have CGC review them? And if they are fraudulent, CGC would reimburse them for that because they're reimbursing other buyers of those books. I don't think Comic Link would be any different. So that would be kind of an interesting rabbit hole to go down. CGC wants a temporary restraining order to shut them down from selling and you know ruining their good name. Uh, maybe you should have worried about your own good name in the first place and you wouldn't have put yourself in this position. So that's essentially the gist of this or the update. Uh, Lesko goes on to say that there'll probably be motions in these cases, so we will get updates coming up in the future weeks. Uh, these are now on both this and the employee wander now on his radar. So he'll, you probably, I think he has a little tracking thing that he does for updates on cases. So we should get updates from Paul uh, whenever any motions or any other legal maneuvers happen on either one of these two. So that's where we sit. CGC goes on the offensive. They have two major scandals kind of floating over their head and We'll see what happens from here, but I wanted to give a little bit of an update on this since we actually had the names, had the court filings, all that stuff since we've been covering this uh, as the situation has developed for the last month, month and a half now. As a you know partial part-time comic book content creator, uh, watching the full-time comic book content creators go crazy over this stuff has been absolutely entertaining and amusing. Uh, it is great great content. Anytime people are scamming grading companies and grading companies are suing people and people are stealing stuff. If you're looking for more coverage on this, follow Paul Lesko, my boy Swaggle House. He's done some videos on this. Automatic Comics did a whole live stream on it the other day, and I am sure plenty of others will be covering this news as well. That's all I got for you boys and girls. If there are other major updates in this, I will continue to keep you guys in the loop. We will catch you on the next one. Peace.